United States of America, known as Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, has come to symbolize freedom throughout the world. People from all nations and from all walks of life have called the United States home. The United States has welcomed them with open arms. Indeed, the famed Statue of Liberty is the embodiment of this dream. In New York's public education system alone, its student body represents 145 countries. The United States has a deep affinity with Supreme Master Ching Hai. With her boundless love and compassion, Supreme Master Ching Hai has provided humanitarian assistance to many parts of the United States. In 1993, she sent relief teams to provide financial and material assistance to the victims of the six Midwestern states that were severely affected by heavy rain and flooding. On December 27, 1997, at the Benefit Concert, A Journey Through Aesthetic Realms, Supreme Master Ching Hai generously contributed 100,000 U.S. dollars each to the Vietnam Children's Fund and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The following year, at another Benefit Concert, One World of Peace, Through Music, she once more contributed generously with two charity organizations being the recipients of her love. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital received $150,000 U.S. dollars, and the Starlight Children's Foundation received a check for $100,000 U.S. dollars. Additionally, in the face of one of the worst human tragedies ever to occur on U.S. soil, on September 11, 2001, Supreme Master Ching Hai responded immediately sending relief teams from around the country and all over the world to Ground Zero in New York City. Supreme Master Ching Hai's financial contributions amounted to over 300,000 U.S. dollars to organizations aiding the victims. To this day, Supreme Master Ching Hai continues to extend her loving compassion to all parts of the U.S. From Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, and Alabama, to California, Florida, Texas, Hawaii, and other states. We now invite you to listen to the following lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai entitled, Jesus and Buddha are Awakened Beings, given on October 14, 1989 in Santa Clara, California, USA. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Good morning, and welcome to a special morning lecture with Master Ching Hai. In thinking of what to... Uh, say this morning, I decided perhaps it would be best to uh, give a brief history of Master Shanghai and what has brought her here to us today. Master Shanghai was born in Vietnam amid the turmoil of a devastating war, brought up in a very spiritual family, a Catholic family that were very devout in their faith. Her grandmother was also a Buddhist. This allowed her the background to understand different perspectives on spiritualism and on her connection to it. From this unique background, she was able to see amidst all of the pain and suffering of the war in Vietnam that there were so many people in need. And she had a, her own personal commitment to help those people. At age 18, she went to England and studied there, and then went and studied in France. At that time, 
she was introduced to her future husband, who is a physician, double doctorate, and a dentist, which brought her to Germany. This allowed her very much multicultural understanding to complement a lot of multi-spiritual understanding. Her quest for truth eventually brought her to the Himalayas, where she obtained her own enlightenment. And her mission now is to teach all of us how close we already are to the truth. All religions in their fundamental aspect are teaching us how to live virtuous lives and how to get closer to our truth. And Master Shinghai is here to remind us that we should get closer to that as well. Master Shinghai has taught me what it is to know my own love from inside and to believe in that. For a very long time, I studied intellectual pursuits, studied in college and went on to graduate school. And, and during all this time, I was studying languages and lived in several different cultures, trying to get an understanding of why it is that we treat one another the way we do. Very often we tend to overlook how personally connected and related we are to each and every one around us. This always felt true to me when I was young, but when I searched toward religious leaders to find that direction, I often found that the fundamentals were being taught of virtue, of having human compassion, having <coughs> trust in one another, and love and understanding, all of those things. But I was also taught that in each particular Christian faith that I studied, that that path had to be the path. And if I did not follow that particular path, then I would not ascend into what was defined to me as heaven. I had a very hard time understanding what that meant. Because to me, I was taught God was love. And if God was love, we should respect everyone, no matter what their different perspective is on their faith. Religion is formulated to give us direction, to give us a format by which to guide our conduct and to guide our lives. But many different cultures have many different ways at looking at the expression of that conduct. Each culture at their basis are at the same truth. You can go to any country in the world and regardless of whether you speak the language, you smile at that person, whomever it may be, and there's a, an understanding, a communication that happens. This doesn't extend just to the human kingdom. It, it, it also happens with animals. I've had some magical experiences out in the, in the wild, coming face to face with deer and buffalo and wild horses. And there's an eye contact that is established between yourself and a, and a wild animal where they, they take a moment to decide whether you're a threat but they understand there is intelligence there. Master Shinghai teaches us to get more in touch with our own truth and through that truth understand how related we are to all of God's creatures. This is why vegetarianism is, is a very important precept among what we do. Very often much of what we do in culture and in society today, we do unconsciously. Because we're taught by our parents that this is what we need to do, or we're taught by our, our culture that this is what we need to do. But often, we tend to forget to be cognizant of our every act, of our every thought, to be aware that sometimes we'll be standing in an elevator with 
10 different people that we've never met before and not look at them at all because we feel nervous that we aren't related to them. I think when you come to an understanding within that you realize we're all connected and, and your level of respect ascends. You come to a, an understanding where each and every person, regardless of the mechanics of their life or the expression of their life, as long as, as they are working toward virtuous living and respect for one another, they deserve respect. I have had countless religious and political debates on a very intellectual level with many different people from many different cultures. And always trying to figure out why is it that they think that particular way? And very, very often trying to press my belief. I no longer do that because I finally come to a point of understanding that as long as those people are living their expression of love, then they're automatically manifesting whatever they determine to be God power. Master Shinghai speaks to us about how many different religions are teaching us fundamentally the same truth. Some call it God power, Buddha nature, the New Age movement, they call it your over self or your inner light or your higher self. All of these things are the same. The point and purpose of our lives is to get to know ourselves and to live as close as we can toward what is truly important. Because I think very often we wait until the end of our lives to look back on what it is that we've done and what we've accomplished. And when we break down all of the different material growth that we've done, we realize the only thing that's truly important is who we have loved our family, our children, and how we have related to them and how we have influenced them. The point of today's lecture is to teach all of you that the truth you already know. Sometimes you just need to be reminded of, to have awareness of what you already do know. Without further ado, I welcome Master Shinghai. Thank you. Good morning. Chào các ông, các bà, các bác. Cơ <cười> vậy, chào an. Mm. You all look like movie stars. Are you movie stars? Yes? <cười> yes, oh. <cười> really? <cười> I was wanting your autograph. I was thinking maybe, and then I can get an autograph. <cười> But we are. We are all movie stars. This world is a super stage, and we are superstars. We play many roles, life after life, in perfection. Sometimes we play angels, sometimes we play human, sometimes we play husband, sometimes we play wife, kings, ministers, queens, and sometimes We play some undesirable roles. But the thing is, we play all these roles unknowingly, unconsciously. So often, we ask ourselves, why? <laughs> why do I have to play this role? Why do I have to act this way? Why someone else is on the throne, and why? I am just a laborer or just a secretary, etc. To the knowing souls, the world is only a stage. And we learn various roles in order to learn and to fulfill our desire and our needs to grow into perfection. Now we often hear that God or Buddha is very merciful, is all-knowing and all-perfect, almighty, omnipresent. 
So why doesn't he know what we need? Why doesn't he make us perfect automatically? Why does he send us here that we have to struggle and learn all this very difficult and seems very suffering lessons? The reason is, well, according to my own enlightenment, <laughs> there isn't that much suffering. It is all play, and everything lasts very quickly in eternity, lasts like a fraction of a second only. Therefore, in God's or Buddha's eyes, there's no actually much and long and enduring suffering. It's only in our eyes, in our own limited understanding and time and space that we perceive them so. When I had the great awakening myself, I saw that I was everywhere and in every creature and just enjoying what it is in that particular situation, be it a butterfly or a bird or an insect, or an angel, or a rock, a tree, everything just perfectly as it is. It is hard to explain this in words, but ultimately all of us will reach that kind of understanding one day, if we yearn for it, and then we will know ourselves. That's the only solution. That's the only time and the only mean for us to end our illusion, our false belief about this ephemeral existence. Because when we are in this kind of human consciousness, and understanding. Everything looks different. But when we are in a higher state of understanding and consciousness, things look different, more joyous, more light-hearted, very positive. Therefore, God or Buddhas or Bodhisattvas mean the saints, like Jesus, is a Bodhisattva or Buddha, I mean the saint in our Western terminology. Buddhas mean enlightened master, gurus or saints. Therefore, the saints or the Buddhas or God in a higher level of consciousness, they do not know what suffering is. They do not understand it. But when we, human beings, or any beings, pray to them, these almighty beings, these very powerful beings and intelligent and compassionate beings, we pray to them very hard, very sincerely, then they will look down and say, Ha, oh, what do you want? <laughs> Why do you think you are suffering? Mm. Yeah, they are puzzling. What is it they call suffering? It is only a play. <laughs> Just like we watch movies or theaters, performance. <laughs> we were crying sometimes because we identify with the roles on the stage. And sometimes the actors and actresses themselves cry and whip and bitter and suffer because of their roles, because of identification with the roles they play. But those who are cool and calm, they just say, what are they crying for? It's only tomato ketchup. <laughs> it's not blood. It's only a play. It lasts for one hour only, or about maybe 20 minutes, maybe two hours. So why is there all this fuss? Yes. Sometimes we are awakened from that illusion and we know this is all play. 
So these Buddhas are saints, are awakened beings from the place, and they know there isn't any suffering, only joy, only fun. <laughs> we play in all different roles for fun, for amusing ourselves, amusing each other, and expressing something of our talents. Yes, some can play a king, very majestic. Some can play a very cruel person, yeah, and their expression is very cruel, very vicious. But when they put down the mask and the clothing, they're ordinary person, very good-hearted. Maybe a good husband, a good father, a good friend, etc. You can go and shake hands with them and have them to help you when you're in trouble. Mm. Similarly, in the creations, there are beings who are already awakened from this so-called illusion, this big dream. And they know that a hundred years of human life is only a flash, a fraction of a flash in the universe. To an enlightened mind, everything coming and disappearing like a bubble, water bubbles in the sea, nothing worth mentioning. Therefore, they do not understand our suffering. In the Buddhist Sutra, there is a scripture called Amitabha Sutra, mean the scripture that tells about the story of the Western paradise. In that sutra, it is described the life of the Western paradise in all bliss, all glory, all love and peace. There's no disturbance, not even the vocabulary of suffering. They never heard of the word suffering, even less to experience suffering. So therefore, when we are suffering in this world, these higher beings do not understand. But they will understand if they come down in this world and to have a look at us, to see what is the matter with you. <laughs> so we pray, we pray very sincerely and earnestly to these beings, be it Buddha, uh, Guan Yin Bodhisattva, or Jesus Christ, or whomever you believe the most and revere most in your heart. Now these beings, after hearing so many repeated and sincere prayers from the earth, would steer something in their heart and could not ignore our requests, so they come down, or they send a part of their consciousness to the earth to check. <laughs> now even then, if they send some consciousness down to the earth, they need instrument in order to understand the earthly problem. For example, when we go down into the sea to experience some things about the fish and the sea life, we must wear something look like a fish or a frog, you know? <laughs> Big shoes and the diver suits, yeah? And the oxygen mask and all this equipment and a flashlight. And we cannot even stay in the sea for very long due to lack of oxygen. So we have to come up after sometimes. So now when we walk on the earth, we no need flashlight, hmm? and we no need to go through all this problem with oxygen mask, and no need to make an effort. But when we are in the sea, the situation is different. We need to make effort and need all this equipment in order to understand, to discover the sea. Similarly, the Buddhas are the saints, like Jesus, Buddha, Sekamoni Buddha, or Amitabha Buddha, Guanyin Bodhisattva. 
when they came down to the earth or send a part of their consciousness to the earth, they need a human body as an instrument in order to explore this world, to understand the human language and the human sentiment. Therefore, sometimes we see walking God, walking Buddha <laughs> on this world, and it is very fortunate. So you see, when the Buddhas or the saints came to this world, they take an instrument as the human body in order to explore this world and understand its problem and understand why the human beings or other beings are crying so much for help. And when the Buddhas or the saints come to this world, with this instrument, then they begin to suffer. Yeah, suffer heat, cold, pressure, air pressure, blood pressure, condition, <laughs> and all kind of inflation pressure, political pressure, <laughs> and things like this. So they might understand what our suffering is all about and why we suffer. And they begin to telephone to their office. <laughs> and say, hey, I know what his problem is. Now I also need help. <laughs> and they begin to cry themselves. <laughs> so, because they themselves are crying to themselves, <laughs> and then they know how to operate their own power from here. Yeah? They are connected with upper store. <laughs> so then they get this blessing and the help power. And then from then, they can just draw them down again, limitlessly, and give it to others. And say, now I know your problem. I have the same. Look, we have this remedy. We can share it together. And that's how we can become Buddha also, because they will distribute us with this limitless treasure and give us medicine to heal our sickness and teach us something of the new world, heavenly world, of Buddha's land. And then we learn something new. We refresh, we become intelligent, wise, and we become like them. We eat the same food, the same bread and water of life like them, and we grow up just like them. So therefore, we heard about many stories of beautiful saints, how they are so devoted to God, to Buddhas. And then from their examples, we learn how to be noble. We learn, we remember our noble origin. Yes? Yes. And then we start to awaken within ourselves the past memories. And we remember who we are and where we came from. Therefore, when Sekamoni Buddha came to earth, he was already Buddha, so it is said in the scripture. So when he was born, he can walk already, immediately, but only seven steps, yeah, and then he fall down again, become normal. <laughs> so it has to be. And then he knows nothing anymore until about 29 years old or 30 some years old. Until his great awakening, then he remember, ah, originally I was a Buddha. I came from such and such wonderful land, and I came here for what purpose? Now, all of us here, who knows, there may be all Buddhas. Maybe you walk eight steps when you were born, but you didn't remember. Maybe there are some other strange phenomena when you were born, but you do not remember. It is not necessary for every Buddha to walk seven steps. Every Buddha does different things. Jesus did not walk seven steps, but he does other things. I am told that he was very clever as a child. He even told his mother to give away her coat for the poor at a very young age. But he only spoke when necessary. He didn't always chatter. Only once in a while he said some such shattering things and shake his mother <laughs> to fear. 
And there was another god in Hinduism called Krishna. He was very mischievous as a child. He was exactly as our child at home. There was a very lovable story about Krishna when he was young. He stole butter to eat with chapatis. Chapatis is Indian bread. He didn't want to eat chapatis without butter, maybe, because it's too dry, it tastes no good. <laughs> so he stole some butter and eat. And then there was a housemaid that caught him, red-handed, I mean, on the act. And then his face was still smeared with butter. But he said, no, I am eaten. No, not me. <laughs> It is lovable, it is forgivable, it is childish. We all do these things when we were children. There is nothing at all. So we do not think that all the Buddhas grow up very holy and very orderly. Yeah, they grow up like we do. They have to eat food, they have to sleep, and listen to their parents obediently and learn from their teachers what they have to learn. Learn from all the people what they have to learn as a human being. And then, from a human being standpoint, they advance to Buddhahood. If they meet a good teacher, if they have opportunity, if they have a sincere desire to be back home where they came from, if they have this pain of separation from the holiness, from the whole, now, when we look at our life and our childhood, we see there is nothing different between us and any Buddha or any saint. So we know that we may become Buddha as well. We may, if we want to. If we sincerely want to achieve this end, we can. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Thank you for your loving presence for today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Please join us again Friday for part two of Jesus and Buddha are Awakened Beings. Now please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for models of success coming up next after Noteworthy News. We wish you everlasting joy and peace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.